You are at Nelson's and I'm very excited because so is Rita Cosby. <laughs> Hello, so, my darling. Welcome to Nelson's. Thank you so much. I'm so <laughs> delighted to be here and to see you. This is fantastic. What's so funny is, as I've mm -hmm. prepared some Rita Cosmopolitan. Wow, so this is really great. To you. Cheers. Welcome to my little. I hope flat. it's strong enough. It's, you well, know, I hope you didn't do a little wimpy wussy drink for me. It's here. pretty wussy. All right, um, let's see. But I'm, I'm just so excited because this is oh, actually our first <laughs> meeting. We have a mutual friend and we met, but I've been an, an admirer and an avid viewer of yours for years. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I love what years, I do. I was going to say, yeah, you make it sound like it was like Stone Age or no, whatever. No, no, no. I was weaned, you know. No, but, <laughs> Came out of the womb and saw you. <laughs> but it's delightful to meet somebody Thank with you. so much personality when I've, mm -hmm. you know, I've trusted you. I've trusted Thank your... Um, That's your biggest mistake is trusting that, me. You know that. That's that, your biggest that mistake. Must be it. <laughs> but it's nice to see that there's a personality um, beyond the news personality. Well, it's interesting too because you know I love. I feel so blessed that every day I meet the most interesting people in the world. And one day it may be a huge world leader, and the next day it may be a huge celebrity. And I feel like every day is is a learning experience. I'm growing. I'm meeting new people, and it's like, okay, what is the next day going to bring? It's always full of surprises. And it's, sometimes it's funny because people meet me and they go, oh gosh, she's funny. Because you can't really be funny if you're talking about uh, Mideast peace right. or talking about you know something very serious, which often my interviews are. Um, and when I get a chance to interview a celebrity or do something really fun and, and kind of be a little bit more myself, um, I really enjoy it. So some, you know, I, I like doing both ends of the spectrum. Well, I'm a news junkie. So oh, good, yay. You know, get, interviewing mm -hmm. celebrities is fantastic and smashing mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. But I get mm -hmm. the butterflies when I'm with a news personality Thank like you. yourself. It's, Thank you. it's, it's different, it's fun, mm -hmm. it's something I respect. And I'm so excited to read Quiet Hero because I've, I've read all about it and now I get Thank to you. read it. Secrets from my father's past. Your father was not only your hero, mm. but she's informed me that he had something in common with me. Yes. In the running. Big runner. You run uh, many marathons, many so, like marathons. more than 15 marathons. Yeah. I know you're a diehard. I'm a multi-marathoner. And I think about my youth and my father, I now realize was sort of running away from something. Um, he had also a secret in his life. He was a POW in World War II and never shared the story like so many of these guys. I know you wrote a book um, about the Nazis mm -hmm. in 1941. And in my father's case, my father was in Poland in 1939, Polish citizen, teenager, and saw the Nazis invading his country. And what I think is so amazing about my dad's story and why I wanted to really share it with the world was because my dad, like so many of these guys, had this decision in World War II, especially in some of these countries where, in my dad's case, he could have left. Many people could not leave. Mm -hmm. But in my dad's case, because he was not Jewish, uh, he had an opportunity. His mother said, I can maybe buy you out of the country. And my father said, no, I am staying and fighting for my country. I am fighting for freedom and wanted to help those inside the ghetto, those outside the ghetto. And it's a great story of, of standing on principle. And my dad really went through hell and back. I mean, my dad was captured. He was taken to a POW camp. He was 90 pounds and six feet tall when he escaped and then was saved by American troops. So I also feel, Nelson, that my dad's story exemplifies the best of America because my dad was literally rescued by Americans. And at this point, my dad said, I'm coming to this great country known as America because they're a free country. They saved me and my men. And I think it exemplifies, um, you know, everybody around the world who's fighting for freedom. And my dad also was a runner like you. When um, when my dad, uh, my whole youth, you know, it's funny, I, I've seen so many images of you running and doing your <laughs> running tours through Central Park. And my whole youth was meeting my dad at the 10 mile mark and giving him Gatorade and then meeting him at the 20 mile mark and giving him some more Gatorade or water and cheering him on. And it's, it says a lot about wonderful. him though, that he wasn't with this secret, with this, yeah. with this, horrific experience behind him that he wasn't carrying that around in a in a sad way he, i mean you you had a dad that was upbeat and when when he sort of came out with his secret to you and then and wrote the book but he actually before he passed away got to see the book and mm -hmm. and go to book signings yes. and, and all of that so 
Was that cathartic for him? I mean, Absolutely. Absolutely. I always was knew my dad. Was he sorry he didn't reveal it sooner? Yes, he was. Although, you know, he wasn't ready. Like so many people who go through not just obviously an extreme trauma like a POW, you can imagine a Nazi POW, how horrific that was, and anybody who went through the very, you know, difficult period. But also anybody who goes through any form of trauma, a lot of times they sort of shield themselves. And since this time, since the book, I've been speaking all over the world. I spoke at the Pentagon and talked about post-traumatic stress. Um, I've been talking to different groups. I spoke to a, a group of Muslim men. Uh, I thought that was so fabulous in Turkey. Um, I've been speaking all over the world, sharing the story of heroism and standing on principle and also moving past because often sharing your experience. And I think my father, I know my father, wasn't ready to share this story for 65 years. And my mother had passed away. He didn't even share it with my mother. Wow. He literally put the shield up. And, and yet was this, it amazes me now to think what an incredible man he was that he became a civil engineer, um, you know, came to a country barely speaking the language when he came to America, um, became a great runner. I mean, he won the 70 and older age group. My dad told me he couldn't wait to turn 70 because he's, I remember, I remember, you know, I he was know, so excited to win these, you know. Hurdles, yeah. yeah. So it's amazing what he's accomplished. And, and uh, I hope that the story doesn't just shed his heroism, but really highlights oh, all the I great heroes out there. Oh, I can't wait to read it. Quiet Hero. Oh, thank read you. It. I'm very excited. Thank you. And, and, part of the and proceeds, not bad looking. Part of the proceeds go to troops and their families because this was also my dad's way to say thank you to American troops and troops all over the world fighting for freedom. Well, now... My dad's 88. World Is War he a runner World, too? No, 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 no. He runs to the bar. Uh, World <laughs> he War runs II. away from him. <laughs> and, and career. But um, mm -hmm. my dad's very discouraged. He, he doesn't feel like we're as patriotic a country mm -hmm. as in his day. And I can see that from his point of view. But I mean, I did a race in Central Park this morning. My hand was over my heart for the national anthem. Uh, I, and I have to admit, a lot of people around me, that wasn't the case. What do you think? What do you think of the state of America? Are you are you satisfied with our our state in the world? I wish that this generation was more patriotic. I really do, and I think your dad is right in some regards because at that time, especially our father's era, you think about it was so black and white and so clear that we had to stand on principle. I mean, the US was invaded, you know, Pearl Harbor happened. And of course we were learning what was happening to countries like Poland and my father's country and so many others countries. And I feel that Americans, this generation, maybe don't realize how lucky we are. You seem to have always been working, always been respected. No whether, sleep. <laughs> no sleep, well that sleep is overrated. You might miss it something. It is, it is. <laughs> what have been your unique challenges as a woman? Is it different mm -hmm. for a woman or are we, I, mean, I would mm -hmm. imagine it's still different for a woman. I think it is still different. And I remember when I first started in television, I applied to a small station in California years and years ago. And it gave me a very sobering lesson. I remember the boss at the time said when I was applying for the job, thank you so much. We already have a pretty woman though. We already have a pretty blonde. And I remember thinking, this guy, wait a minute. And then I said to him, but do you have a pretty blonde who speaks a couple languages, who works 24 hours a day? And he said, no, I don't have that blonde. And he actually offered me a job. So I do find that, and I think back to that moment because I think, would someone have ever said that to a guy? Oh, we already have an attractive uh, blonde or we already have an attractive brunette or whatever, you know? And no, they would not have. And do I think that there's still a bit of a stigma now today? Sometimes, um, but I also think that there are a lot of pluses because especially in what I do, you know, I'll interview sometimes rogue leaders. I mean, I'll interview some very difficult people. And is it sometimes easier when it's Rita Cosby knocking on the door and they're worried, they know that it's a very difficult time in history and maybe it's a very, they know whoever's gonna be asking them questions, it's gonna be a tough time. And in some cases, maybe they'll open the door more likely for someone who's a woman than a man. And maybe, maybe they won't see me coming. In some senses, there's a little bit of an advantage to, oh, she's an attractive woman, she'll be very nice and very kind, and of course, Rita the journalist will absolutely ask them whatever the tough questions are. And once you have them before you, you have to. So I think there are pluses and minuses. Yeah. And um, Well, you had Governor Cuomo 
call and ask. Yeah, to yeah, speak yeah, to you, yeah, which, yeah. That was know, kind of fun. I was in the middle of I was in the middle of about to go to uh, Randy Jones of the Village People, who I love, who's <laughs> a good friend and a talented musician. And all of a sudden, I hear uh, Governor Cuomo's on the phone. So I, I do feel like I feel like my whole life is a wild dinner party with all these interesting people so and what do coming you do in and for out. Fun? Do you have a dinner party? Do you go out to dinner parties? What's I do. What's I your do. downtime, as little as it may be? Well, you're gonna laugh. Um, we have a lot in common because I love to travel. Um, I love, it's so funny, you would think people say to me, you know, I do so much traveling for work and of course if it's breaking news you hop on a plane, you're on the plane the next minute, you're going to some strange country and doing something interesting and studying, you'd think the last thing I would do is travel. But I love traveling and you know, I've gone to very cool places, I've climbed up volcanoes in Hawaii like somebody else I know. Um, I've also uh, gone to Antarctica. Um, step foot on Antarctica. I love to travel and I love to meet people. And uh, I do also love movies too. It's funny, you know, I, I'm one of those people, I believe in a, a great, full, wonderful life. And uh, I tell everyone my only regret is that I have to sleep. Now I'm going to pull out my fat lady. Oh, okay. okay. To the fat lady's oh, okay, and great. What I want you to do mm -hmm. is pull out. Ten strips of paper. Okay. Just throw them down here on the side. All right, all right. And then Let's I'm going to ask here. you questions we're dying to know. This way we can cram in a lot of information. Fantastic. Quick amount of time. All right. What's the last TV show you watched at home? Oh, that's a good one. You know what, actually? I watched the Bible. It was good. It huh? was fabulously done, and Mark Burnett and Roma Downey, and so there was such, you know, I had Mark Burnett on my show and Roma Downey on my show, and I wanted to see how this brilliant, masterful executive producer would make a story as important as that uh, come to life and and magnificent. It's the ultimate magnificent. Soap opera. Yes, it was. It was so well done. What's the last music you bought? Last music I bought. You know what's so funny? I don't buy that much music, but I go to a lot of music yeah. events. Um, I went to, I, see, I love everything. Um, you know, I, uh, Michael Bolton I love. Uh, going to Larry Gatlin's concert. Um, uh, I love uh, Sting. I love the Beatles. That's a hard one because I really, I go to a, try to go to a lot of concerts more than buy music. Uh, I prefer to see it live. I like to see him in action. I'll give you a little sting gossip. I see him in Central Park. Yes. He lives right off the park. Does he run? With, no, but with okay. Trudy, his wife. Yes. And they're still holding hands and they're still very much a couple. And I think, How I don't beautiful know if it's the that? tantric yoga or not, but it, they're still Wow, it's working. Romantic. That's good. Do you do the crossword puzzle? And if so, pencil or ink? You know what? I do do the crossword puzzle. I do do a little bit of pencil. And I'll tell you one of the most wonderful moments when I knew I made it in the business. I get All of a sudden, all these it. people came over to me and they said, <laughs> I think, I can't remember what it was, but I think they said, um, you're 42D. And I'm like, no, I'm not 42D. <laughs> That's a whole other story. But I said, wait a minute, everyone's coming around. You're 42D. I'm like, what, what? And it said, you know, Fox News star. And it, went, and it had my name, and I said, that's great. That you know, of all the sweet, things I did, great. I was so pleasantly surprised. That one I didn't ink, by the way. That one I was able to answer. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have a personal trainer, chef, or driver, which would it be? Well, let's see. I would have, I probably have, I have a wonderful man in my life who's probably all of those things. Ah. So I'm pretty good. I'd maybe have a, a personal pilot. Good one. All right. Beyonce, awesome or overrated? Awesome. I think she's fun. <laughs> um, whether she lip syncs or not, I think she's still great. She puts on a great show and uh, it makes us all smile. That's, that's what entertainment's all about. Have you ever walked out of a movie? And if so, which one? You know what? I have never walked out of a movie. And I think it's because I have so many friends in the business and I have such appreciation for what goes into it. There have been times where I'm like, okay, I'll return that text once in a while. Uh, um, and there are times that I've felt like, gosh, should I? But, but then I'm also, I always believe that people work their hearts and souls out. You and I have met so many people that I feel like there's gotta be something coming. There's been times where I'm like, okay, the twist is coming, the twist is coming, the twist is coming. It didn't come and I need to go for maybe another uh, Rita Cosmopolitan, <laughs> Cosby, Cosby Mopolitan afterwards, you know? Uh, but no, I've never walked out of a movie out of respect for the do talent, you, how's that? Do you stay for the final credits? Most of the time I do, <laughs> most of the time, don't you? 
Sure. <laughs> Life begins. I'm, I'm at, an appreciator of fine yeah. things. I will. I have patience. Life begins at what age? Life begins. Um, I think every morning. I think life begins the minute you get up in the morning. We talked about this. That I feel it's always a new day. It's always a fresh start. And you can, whatever moment in your life and whatever direction it is, um, you can shape it. You can make it. I believe there's someone directing it as well too. But I also believe every day is a new day and a new start of your life. And that's what's so great about it. Set the alarm. All right. Who's a deceased star you wish you could have met? Oh, that's a good, you know what? It, I've been very blessed. I've met a lot of interesting people. I met uh, Michael Jackson. I did, you know, I had many discussions with Michael Jackson and was one of the people um, before he passed that he would do interviews with. And um, I wish I had met Whitney Houston. I didn't meet Whitney Houston. And I think uh, she was such a tremendous talent and left us way too soon. And I think she would have been an interesting person with those credible pipes. I mean, her voice was Amazing. unbelievable. But there's a lot of people that even in, you know, many, many years ago that I wish I would have met. I, I love people. Any special hangover remedy? Um, just more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> really Feed the beast. I don't even want to do the last question. That would be the perfect way to go ahead. And your worst subject in school? My worst subject in school uh, was attention, was paying attention to the teachers, I would say. Um, I was always, I was a quick study, which was a good habit for a journalist. Um, but I was always, it was like, okay, Rita, I'm over here. I think I was always interviewing my classmates. Right. I was a budding journalist. You know, I was a little yappy in class, believe it or not. Yeah, I was, I was, um, I was always in trouble for talking. Yeah, it was, it was like, Miss Cosby, could you stop, you know? Um, but now, of course, the school's like, hey, would you come back and do our graduation speeches? Would you do this? And so I guess I did okay. Um, but no, you know, I loved, I, I was one of those people early on, I knew what I wanted to do. And I always loved meeting new people and would watch, you know, when I was younger, I'd watch Barbara Walters, I'd watch Diane Sawyer, I'd watch uh, Leslie Stahl, I'd watch some of these folks when they were very young and saying, gosh, one day if I could do that or, or Mike Wallace and some of these incredible legends in the business. And I feel just so lucky that I'm doing what I love. I mean, that's a gift. What more because you want out of life? Yes, right? what you a know? gift. Wake up healthy and do yeah. what you love. All right, so the book is Quiet Hero. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to dive into it tonight. I can't uh, wait for you, especially with your great background. You are like the perfect reader. I I'm can't wait. to read it. <laughs> And where, where can everybody listen to you? We know it's, it's W O R. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm doing obviously tons of TV, and then on radio every day. I'm at four to six Eastern time on W O R Radio, seven ten a.m., and it's all over. Basically, it airs all over the East Coast, and I've had some really interesting folks, a lot of celebs, a lot of big politicos. Are you tweeting? And, um, and I'm tweeting. I'm tweeting, and I'm on Facebook at Rita Cosby, so you can follow me there. But make sure you go to Nelson's site first, and then I could be the second stop. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll retweet her. Okay. Okay, good. I'm excited. Thanks for coming over. Oh, Can we finish our drinks now? What a pleasure we'll to meet talking, you. Yes, talking, talking. I can't wait. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What a blessing Yay. to meet you. How awesome. Cheers. Cheers. I met the great Nelson Aspen.